guys, welcome to another Homebrew Wednesday. Um, I've got a few things I want to talk about this week. Um, firstly, we just come off the back of a, a really long week, a really great week of the SJ4 Challenge beers. I enjoyed them thoroughly. It was a really good experience, and um, it was interesting also to see uh, you know, the difference of opinion that you know other people had. It was good. I can't wait to do the next one. Um, I'm not going to. Uh, Right, I say who was better, who was not. I mean, obviously mine was the worst, but I had my favourites and some weren't so good. Not to say they were bad, they were all pretty good. I'm just saying some were better than others. Um, so yeah, can't wait for the next one. Um, right, uh, moving on. We've got um, brew house update. Um, Got something to show you in a minute. Um, I am waiting for, still waiting for, my gas hob. Um, that's all I need now. Now, once that's here, I'm ready to go. Um, I didn't bother doing um, HLT with one of the kegs, um, and I'll show you why in a minute. So, I'm going to carry on using the um, plastic bucket boiler as the HLT. Um, mash turn you've seen and um, the other keg turned into a ke uh, kettle, a brew kettle. Um, I've done it a little bit different to others and I'll show you that in a second. Um, I've not put a sight glass on it, I've not put a tap on it. Um, not to say I won't in the future but at the minute I don't see why. Now I'm going to do, um, do a brew and then you know, work out the kinks from that, see where um, see whether I need it or not. Um, so yeah, so let's go, let's go and take a look at that. So this is the, um, the keg I've done, and uh, what I've done differently is uh, I've cut the top off um, different, you'll see now, I'm going to have to take it off. What I've done is I've done it like that, and I've cut round the handles, And uh, that's how I've done it. I've left the handles on so it makes it easier for me to pick up and carry. So that's how I've done that. That's obviously going to sit on the um, on the burner. And it's still left with this, which just sort of fits back on. It's going to act as a lid. So that's it, that's all I've done with that. Now uh, once I've done my first brew I'm going to see whether I need to put um, a tap on it or a side glass or both um, and then I'll polish it up and make it look all pretty and nice. Okay, so that's that. The next thing I want to show you, just look back up a bit, it's an old freezer, it's a collar on it. Again it's looking a bit ugly but we'll pretty that up when I'm finished messing about with it. Um, this basically is going to double up as um, a chiller Oops. and a fermentation fridge. So I haven't fixed it all into place yet, so let's move the lid off. And in there we have a 50 litre keg, which I have managed to. God, which I have managed to get the feed pipe out of, which is this. Yeah, that goes. That goes in there, and you know, the beer comes out. Um, so yeah, I've bought this little nifty um, top that goes on it. No gas inlet, beer outlet. It just sort of fits into place. On top of the the, the the pipe there, so we can force carb it. So basically, this keg is now a 50 litre usable beer keg. Now, the 50 litres means I have to use two buckets to fill it every time, so I have to do a double batch every time I want to fill it. But 
what I've decided as well is I've got, I'll just put that there, I have another one of these that I took out of the, the boil kettle, yeah? And then basically I'm going to cut it off right about here, I'm just left with this bit here, and then in there I'm going to take the little circle bit of this bit here, in here, yeah? I'm going to bore that out, smash it out, something, I don't know, I'm going to stick a... Um, a grommet in there and fit an airlock. And basically, what I'll do then is with this, I'll fill the beer in here. Yeah, the wart. Um, I'll pitch the yeast into this, and then I'll use this as a fermenter as well. So I can use it as a lager in fermenter using this um, uh, fridge. Well, it's a chest freezer, but I'm in the process of converting it into a fridge using the um, the STC 1000. Okay, and that's it. That keg just fits in there just nicely, but I had to put this collar on because there just wasn't enough height from here to the lid to, to have the um, this thing on it, okay? Um, so I've just built a small collar so I can get that on and plenty of room for the tubes. Um, as you can see, there's not much room for anything much else. I might get a few bottles in there. Um, but that's about it. Okay. Okay, so that's that. Um, box crafted for 11. Right. So that's the um, <coughs> where I'm up to that. This is the, um, the STC 1000 I'm going to use. So you've all seen one of these temperature controllers before. Basically I've got some where is it? Got some wire. Basically it's gonna turn my freezer into a fridge and um, temperature controlled fermentation chamber. So that's that. I've seen them um, <coughs> Right, I don't know if anybody's used any of these, uh, I don't know if they're all the same, but on there it's got a little diagram of how to wire it up, yeah? But I've seen, you know, I've watched videos on how to wire these up properly, and uh, on a couple of them they seem to have swapped around the heating and cooling. Is that the case with all of these? Is that just a bad sticker or has it been rectified or what? I don't know. I suppose it's not going to hurt to try them both, to be honest with you. If it doesn't work the first way, then I'll just swap them over. And I'm about to do it that way. Yeah. Anyway, that's that. Um, so yeah, once my gas burner gets here, um, i got three brews to do, pretty much. Immediately. Um, i got my pilot brew, which is going to be the first old grain I do in here. Um, uh, because it was the first old grain I ever made. It's um, an IPA. Uh, then I've got English Bitter, um, uh, which is uh, my own recipe. And then I've got an English Bitter, which is Harry Brew 69's recipe. Um, I've got the grains for mine. They, they've come. But I've ordered, uh, I've ordered the English Bitter kit of Harry and a mash paddle. Um, and I'm just waiting on them. Um, there's no hurry. Like I say, I've got plenty to do in the meantime. I'm not going to be brewing until sort of late next week anyway. Because um, I've got to wait for the gas burner. Plus I've got two brews to do beforehand. Um, so there's no rush, uh, Harry. Uh, just um, get them out as soon as you can. Uh, without having to um, rush it. Okay? Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to the uh, the mash paddle. Um, I want it more of as uh, I don't know. I, th I think I've I'll probably use it once in a mash, and then I'm going to hang it up. They're such good quality. They look really nice, and I think it's just going to look really, really good in my bar here, um, or even hung up over there in the brewery, um, just to say you know this is my place. Um, it's a little bit of a personalisation plus. 
it links me to uh, all you guys on YouTube as well because I know a few of you have bought the mash paddles. They look really good. Um, and I just wanted one. Uh, so that's it. Um, I've got a couple more videos coming up uh, that I'm probably going to film later today. I'm going to show you um, a marshmallow vodka and amaretto, how to make amaretto at home. We'll probably do them today. Um, and if you've watched the other how I do that videos on the, the spirits and stuff, um, I showed you a carbon filter. Now, so, uh, somebody brought up um, an interesting question. I think it was um, the Norfolk Hillbilly. Um, he asked if he could use a Brit filler. Um, I, I said yes, but I didn't really look into it all that much. Um, but I, since I have looked into it, and uh, you know, there are other things in those um, filtering cartridges other than the carbon. And to filter the alcohol, all you need is the carbon, the active carbon. Um, but and plus uh, the Brit filter cartridges, they're they're quite expensive. So I've went out and bought something. Hang on one second. Right, I went out and bought one of these from Wilkinson's. It's just uh, down there. It's um, Aqua Optima for pure water. It's basically a Brit filter, just a cheaper version. This cost me seven quid, and it came with a cartridge. And uh, I'll show you it now. Just to get rid of that. This is what you end up with, and you've got, um, if you, uh, you can see there's, there's the cartridge there, yeah, and between the bottom of the cartridge and the bottom of the jug, there is a litre of space, which is ideal. Yeah, so we're going to take this off. So basically, you put your water in that bit and it filters through there. <coughs> so, this is a, this is the cartridge, okay. It is sealed, and you know you're not supposed to tamper with it, but I am. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut around the rim here. I'm going to empty the contents, throw them away. I'm going to line it with a coffee filter, and possibly have to cut it. I don't know. We'll. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to go through that with you guys. You know, me doing it is going to be my first time, so as I'm doing it and you're seeing it. That's it, so we're going to cut the top off, line up the coffee filter, I'm going to use active carbon, which is here, yeah, and this is um, the stuff that you use in aquariums, you know aquarium filters, so this is filter carbon, yeah, you can get it from most pet shops, or anywhere that sells uh, aquatic supplies, and basically it's just chips of carbon, Roughly about that size. Yeah. They all vary in size. And basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take some of those. We're gonna we're gonna you have to wash them. Uh, when I say wash them, you put them in like a sieve and you just run cold water over them until it stops running dark. Okay? So you get all the dust off and stuff like that. And then we're gonna put them line that with carbon uh line that with a coffee filter, but um, carbon in, it says for water on here as a guide, it's one gram of carbon per litre. Okay, so we're going to line that with um, a coffee filter and it says here use one gram of carbon per litre of water, um, but we're not doing water, so I'm going to basically fill this with carbon and or maybe just half of this. I mean, it's one pound thirty for this. Um, yeah, so you've got to filter 23 litres, it's worth it, because uh, you use a full one of these with this, um, then put another coffee filter over that, and then we're going to find a way of putting this lid back on. So I basically, when I do it, if you see here where it's been sealed, uh, I don't know if you can, you see that little lip there, it sort of seals into there, so you can split that in two all the way around and there's a little thing in here you know which you put that into like that and then you gotta twist it yeah so you twist it like that and it holds it in place so if they're two separate 
that's going to be adequate, I think, to hold it in place. Plus, it'll give you the um, the option of taking it out and refilling it. You know, because once you've used the carbon, uh, you can only use it for so many liters, and then you have to ditch it because it stops becoming effective. Um, but with this kind of active carbon, you're going to be able to put, I would say, 10 liters through. So if you've got like um, a 5 or 6 litre batch, you put it through twice, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to polish it up just as, just as well, if not better than the other method that I showed you last time. Not to mention it's a lot cheaper, so it's like 7 quid for that, and it was uh, £1.30 for that. And that's just a one-off payment, because you'll use the same one over and over again. And so that's how it works, you put that in there, oops, wrong way. In there, fill the top part with your alcohol, it'll stream through to the bottom, and then you can just sort of tip it into another jug and pass it through again. And that's what that's what's gonna happen next. So that was what you're gonna see. Um so I'm gonna do that filter, a video on making that. Then a video on the marshmallow vodka, a marshmallow infused vodka, and the amaretto. Now the um, the amaretto will probably be up today or tomorrow. The uh, the filter video will be up today or tomorrow. But uh, I'll start filming the marshmallow vodka today. But it takes a while for it to infuse, about seven days or something like that. So I'll probably put it up um, next week because uh, we're gonna have to infuse the vodka with the marshmallows that filter it. And so on and so forth. And that's it for now. Um, uh, oh, the vinegar, <coughs> that will be, <coughs> excuse me, the vinegar will be done. Um, I'm just waiting for the uh, mothers to grow. Um, it, like I said, <coughs> when I uh, first mentioned the videos uh, about making the videos, you know, it's going to be a long process of making vinegar. So. We're probably looking at uh, four or five months before the videos actually come out. So, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. And, uh, see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>